morning everyone welcome to daily news analysis today we are going to discuss on ease of doing business report released by world bank before we go to the detailed analysis of the report let us understand some basics about doing business report the doing business report is an annually published report which was developed by a team led by janko and paul in 2003 it has been elaborated by the world bank group since 2003 every year that is aimed to measure the cost to firms of business regulations in 190 countries some of the highlighted findings of the edb are as follows so lower barriers to startups are associated which means less license raj system or lower barriers improve the ranks so lower cost of entry encourages entrepreneurship enhances firm productivity and reduce corruption this is what happened in many developed countries that is the reason they are in good ranks today simple startup translates into greater employment opportunities greater employment opportunities improves purchasing power of the people such improvement in purchasing power improves the revenue to the government some of the highly important features of the report rise in india's ranking by 14 places to 63 in the world bank's ease of doing business 2020 india also ranks in top 10 most improved countries in the world for the third consecutive year from being ranked 142nd in 2014 which was very low to 63 in 2020 it has been a significant upward journey for the country in a rank list the country's ranking in the trading across border which means trading across the countries uh, category jumped 12 places from 80 to 68 signifying the abatement of paperwork in favor of electronic filling of documents which means after the digitalization process the rank has been improved and single window customs procedures so interestingly there has been improvement in a parameter that most industrialists would consider as a problem even now that is dealing with construction permits the country's ranking has improved by 25 places from 52 to 27 this is an highly important improvement india has been made how india got its ranks improved a latest report has come on the back of the implementation of the insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 india's rank has improved from 108 to 52 in resolving insolvency category with the overall recovery rate for lenders moving up from 26.5 percent to 71.6 percent to the dollar according to the world bank consider another parameter getting electricity which is very important for which India's current rank is an impressive 22. A recent schemes to universalize access to power category certainly seem to have helped matters. Example, Saubhagya scheme. What is the use for India getting a good rank? Getting a good rank definitely improves global investments in the country. Tremendously increases foreign direct investment in turn increases foreign exchange reserves improves the performance of micro small and medium enterprises and the overall improvement of the economy attracts investments in the infrastructure improves private investment which is a need of the hour if it improves the foreign direct investment and the foreign exchange reserves it avoids problems what happened in 1990s such as balance of payment problems improved private investment definitely avoids India for going further slowdown in economy what is happening today so India's private investment is going down because of crowding out effect crowding out effect means government borrowing money from private by issuing government securities then the private firms will have less funds for other investments so the government now should avoid crowding out effects so private investments must happen more on infrastructures so that will definitely boost the economy the critical part of the report 
the index pertains essentially to two jurisdictions only delhi and mumbai to gauge the overall national business environment that means the report calculated or taken into consideration delhi and mumbai and applied to the whole country starting running or shutting down a business may be easier in delhi and mumbai compared to coimbatore or hyderabad where it is probably more difficult the report also stated from next year onwards they are going to add bengaluru and kolkata but they do call for elaborate caution and do desist from interpreting too much we clearly need much improved edb nationwide and not merely in the two main business and policy making centers as done at present the important challenges cannot be enough said that the rankings are merely indicative and very much work in progress india still below its competitors for global capital particularly china which at rank 31st which is one level above the france the country still india still lacks in key metrics such as starting a business enforcing contracts and registering property and paying taxes india has to improve in the all four important categories admittedly it is not easy to streamline process across the country given india's federal setup where states have a big say in several parameters that go into the rankings such as securing building permits land approvals electricity connections registering assets etc the easier part is now done and rise in ranking from here on will depend on how much the center is able to convince the states to reform their systems that is the center and states corporations or cooperative federalism is going to play a key role here the way forward is to carry out long pending reforms of judicial processes to do away with routine legal delays similarly india still scores very low when it comes to registering property high stamp duty rates seem a pervasive incentive to undervalue and underreport real estate transactions india also scores lowly for starting a business a poor 136th rank even though india enacted start up india and stand up india campaign its global rank has only moved just one notch in the past year and primarily due to the decision to abolish filing fees for the simplified online format for incorporating a company and its memorandum and articles of association other countries seem to have done more better than india conclusion india needs to move faster on reform front to better attract global savings and investments which is highly necessary for india today we need to policy induce much greater edb to boost entrepreneurship nationally it would lead to better employment opportunities higher tax revenue to the government and also gives rise to improved personal income as well the gst regime which was introduced in 2017 made the taxes both on income and consumption front easy and taxpayer friendly that's it for this article thank you for watching